Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how to get monetized on YouTube in 2020. So basically this video is going to work out that first I'm going to explain a little bit about what you need to do to get monetized and how you can go about getting those things and then secondly I'm going to talk a little bit about the monetization process and then thirdly I'm going to talk about my analytics and how much I've earned so far being monetized on YouTube in 2020. So I'm doing this video because I shared a poll on my community tab once I got monetized but I was still going through the monetization process I asked you guys if you would be interested in seeing this and this was the most like reactions I've ever gotten to a single poll. I think over a hundred of you voted on it and it was like 95% wanted to see this video. My channel is generally about doing a PhD and all of the kind of student lifestyle stuff that goes along with that. But I know that a lot of you are interested in starting your own channel and that's something I can talk about a little bit, the kind of process I've gone through. I started my channel in just the very end of December, so December 28th I think I started it and I posted my first video around then. And in the six months now since then, on June 29th, I got monetized on YouTube. So that means now that having watched this video, you should have seen an ad before this video, unless you have ad blockers on which is something that once I started doing YouTube videos I realized I needed to turn off because I didn't realize how much it kind of was impacting other creators by having that on so I have mine off now but yeah you should have seen an ad which means now that I can earn money through my videos I'm about 10 days I think since I've been officially monetized let's just see so I officially got monetized on the 29th it's now the 13th of July it's been almost two weeks but I have about 10 days of data to show you guys so that you can see how much I'm earning at the moment especially if you're interested in starting your own channel that's educational you might be interested in seeing how that works so I guess mainly the first things to talk about is how do you get monetized on YouTube so why do some people have ads on their videos and some people don't so the two things that you need to get monetized on YouTube are 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours so the watch hours means that you need to have 4,000 hours of your videos watched, of your content watched, which is 240,000 minutes, which is actually a lot. And for me, that was the harder part. So I got to the 1,000 subscribers a while back because I have my 1,000 subscriber giveaway was April 23rd. And then it, I was only on around maybe one or 2,000 watch hours at that time. And then since those two months, then it took me to get to the 4,000 watch hours. And there's a few different reasons for that. It just depends on the kind of content you're making. So for me, it's like my content don't go viral or get crazy views necessarily but I think people tend to watch them for longer so I do have a couple of like study with me videos that tend to get a lot of watch hours but even then without doing those I think all those videos together made up five or six hundred watch hours so it just takes time and I think a lot of people try to start a YouTube channel thinking that they're gonna get monetized in a week it took me six full months and how many videos in that time 59 videos so it definitely takes some time and it requires a lot of effort so I think if you're starting a channel for that reason it's not necessarily going to work out but for me my main reason for starting this was because I don't feel like there's a ton of people talking about it on YouTube and I'm really interested in like the productivity side of things with the, doing the PhD and that's what most of my videos are about so I was starting to share those things as well as work on my public speaking skills because while I do have a background in drama I still wasn't completely confident speaking to camera anyways and I think doing these videos has helped with that a lot because even when I look at my older videos just significantly more awkward I guess um I think I've come a long way with the speaking to camera since then so I definitely feel like my reason for starting this channel has fulfilled itself and it's continuing to get better every time I make new videos and I'm really enjoying it I think the process is really fun so it's all about finding your reason for starting your channel before worrying about whether you're going to get monetized or not because it's not really going to sustain you if your only reason is to earn money but obviously as PhD students earning an extra income is great so I understand that that might be a driving factor I'll talk a little bit about what I think helped with getting to those goals for myself so I think for the subscribers one thing is 
people kind of when you're watching videos i notice myself do this i don't really tend to subscribe to people immediately sometimes you need to be reminded a bit that you need to subscribe so i tried i haven't really done this as much recently but just mentioning at some point in the video like if you want to see this content you need to subscribe because you're not going to be shown it really that much otherwise and especially with the notifications as well so for people to watch your videos having the notification on helps and i've noticed that a lot with a lot of the creators that i love watching when you don't have all notifications on you don't get notified fully about most of their videos so if you really do care about a creator's content it's important to turn on those notifications and make sure whatever device you watch on has notifications on it so that you actually do know when the videos are up because otherwise you can go onto their page and realize you've missed a ton of their videos ones that might have been really useful for you telling people i guess to subscribe and have the notifications on will help with that you don't want to do it too much but then as well you need to be giving them a reason to so like i know that when i tell people what upcoming videos are coming up they're more likely to subscribe because they know that they're looking for a specific video that's coming up so if they want to know about it they need to subscribe i think one thing that helps a bit with that is having some sort of i don't want to, the word niche is so overused here but like having a topic for your channel that people know when they look at your videos they know what kind of content you're going to be providing so i think when your channel is a bit all over the place people are less likely to subscribe because they don't really know what kind of video is going to be coming next for them and it's just not really that clear but at the same time i think it's important not to get yourself stuck in this pigeonhole because there might be a time when you want to make different videos you might be stuck then making the same content because that's what you've promised to your to your viewers so i think having like a balance of being generally about a specific topic but then like having other videos that make sense in that category i think is a good way to go with that in terms of the watch hours i think it's important to make sure your videos are engaging the whole way through so maybe having some elements of your video that you mention early on but happen later on in the video so that people are waiting for that to happen as well i think obviously making longer videos will help when it's 10 minutes long even if they only watch half of it that's still five minutes of watch time which adds up whereas if your video is like three minutes long and someone watches half of it that's only a minute and a half so I think making longer videos but then not too long videos is a good idea one thing that's specifically good is videos over 10 minutes because I think for me as a viewer when I see something that's that long I know it's going to give me a good amount of content without being like too much and as well YouTube tends to favor those videos well that's what I've heard they tend to favor videos that are 10 minutes longer because once you are monetized you can put ads in the center of those videos when they're over 10 minutes long that's one thing to consider I think having longer videos videos can help and generally in terms of trying to get more people to your channel one thing that I found really helped was promoting my videos on social media not even necessarily my own personal social media but promoting into different Facebook groups that are very relevant to the topic so for PhDs anytime I have a video that's relevant to writing or reading papers different things like that I'll post it in there but making sure that you either contact the person who runs the group to ask if it's okay or just making sure you're not being spammy when you put things in there because a it's really annoying but also you could also have like some flags against you if you could get reported for being too spammy in groups so I think it's more about actually trying to provide benefit to the people in that group so I've generally had really good response to my videos because they're very useful for PhD students but if I was to post rant like if I was to post this video in there it wouldn't necessarily work because they're not going to be interested in it and it's not really going to benefit anyone so I wouldn't post this in there the other thing in terms of generally getting views is to make sure your videos are searchable so YouTube is a search engine like I think people generally know that when you're looking for things on YouTube you're searching for different things and you'll find a video that works for whatever you're looking for youtube is owned by google which is the biggest search engine in the world youtube is the second biggest search engine in the world so making sure that when people are searching for things your videos are the ones that come up and that's kind of its whole other video so if you were interested in seeing that i could talk a bit about search and tags and things like that but you'll notice that my video 20 things to do in first year of a phd is ranked number one for the tag phd student so when you type PhD student, that video comes up first. That's the way it is at the moment. And 
that specific keyword is searched for approximately 190 something thousand times a month which means that in a month there's potentially 190,000 people who can see that video and it took a long time for that video to get up there so I think one thing to make sure when you're starting out your channel is not to get discouraged so that video is from it is from two months ago and I think it took at least a month until that started happening so you just never really know and it's important to just kind of keep on keeping on with these things but making sure that your videos are ranked for maybe smaller keywords words to start off and then start to add in more like keywords that are seen more so I use TubeBuddy which means that I get to see what kind of scores these keywords have and things like that so that platform is really useful for anything when you're looking up different keywords and deciding what tags to add for your videos generally it's recommended they give you like a range of ones that will work this one I just happened to get into so it's just a thing of luck here and I've got a couple videos in that keyword which even though it recommends to me not to use that keyword so it's kind of like you want to put a mixture of ones that are easier to rank for and more difficult to rank for and just kind of boost your chances of getting seen as much as possible. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the monetization process. So once you've reached your 1000 subscribers and your 4000 watch hours, you'll then need to sign up for Google AdSense. And then following that, you'll need to kind of submit your channel to be approved for YouTube. So actually YouTube automatically does this and they'll just look through your videos. So your top watched videos, the videos with the most watch hours and different things like that to make sure that your videos all comply with the partner program policies. And you can read through those if you want to see would your kind of channel be appropriate for getting monetized. So it's just important, I think at the beginning of your process on YouTube to make sure you read through those and make sure that the content you're making is going to meet those guidelines because there's no point in trying to get monetized if the kind of content you're making doesn't fit the partner program policies. For getting the AdSense approved as well as for getting the YouTube channel approved, it can take a couple of weeks for either of those things. What I did was I followed Morgan Stradling's hack, which was I did send feedback in both of these things. So I will link her video where she explains the process down below if you want to see another version of these kinds of videos. But basically what you're going to do is you're going to do the send feedback feedback in the platform on YouTube analytics and you're going to let them know that you have reached the requirements for 1000 watch hour 1000 subscribers and 4000 watch hours on whatever date and just to let you know if you need to do anything else and i was approved within 24 hours so i think i reached the requirements on 29th of june and i was monetized on the 30th of june the one person that i follow is Catherine manning who said hers took i think three weeks to come through that was one hack that i think really worked i don't know if it will work for you so that means that once I was monetized I could start monetizing all my videos so going in and adding in the ads so you can use for the videos longer than 10 minutes you can have ads in the middle otherwise you can have ads before or after the video and there's different types of ads that you can have so let's just see what we have in our analytics so when I want to monetize a video you have the option to have display ads overlay ads sponsored cards skippable video ads and non-skippable video ads and even if you select all of these and you know you put in the maximum amount of ads you could possibly put in like Google is only going to put in what it thinks people will watch generally what I do for longer videos is I'll put in an ad for every five minutes of content you can do this using the automatic ads which YouTube can select where they put in the ads or you can put them in manually so I think I mostly put them in manually and yeah that means you're pretty much ready to go once you've added in ads to all of your videos and you might not decide that that's useful for all of your videos so for example for the timing videos I don't think it's useful to put ads in the middle because it will mess up people studying or their work timing so I just put one in at the start and the end but for all the other videos I think it's fair enough to put them in the middle of the video as well and I think most of my videos are over 10 minutes anyways that's because I'm providing information about given topics and it just generally tends to take a while to explain everything but for shorter videos obviously you won't have as much opportunity to get those other ads in there. So now I'm going to go into my actual analytics and how much I've made since I started. So here I am in my YouTube analytics and the first thing that you can see is just my homepage, everything that's going on at the moment. So we're going over to the analytics part. 
and here you can see like my views for the last while. So you can see I'm typically getting around 600 views a day and about 40 to 45 watch hours a day. And here we have my estimated revenue. So I'm getting, you can see the first day, the 29th of June, I just got monetized a couple minutes before then. So I really only consider the 20, the 30th of June to be the day I officially got monetized, but I actually reached the requirements on the 29th of June. You can see that at first I was making about 2.30 a day, 2.60 a day, and then it starts to go down and now it's between 150 and 250 euro a day. And there's a few reasons for this, I think. So let's just go into the revenue tab. We can see things a bit more. So here we have my playback based CPM. So the CPM is the cost per thousand views. So it means how much my advertisers are paying for a thousand views of my videos essentially. This takes a couple days to process. So we can see we have up to the 11th of July here and today it's the 13th recording this video. You can see that it starts off really low but then it goes up to 12 euro for a thousand views and then it goes around 8 to 750 and now we're kind of getting back up again to kind of the 9 10 euro mark. The lowest I had was just under 7 euro. So that means if a thousand people watch my videos theoretically I should earn 7 euro but that's not actually how things work because a lot of my viewers will have ad blockers on so that means that you don't earn for those or you might earn slightly less for people who have YouTube premium. I think it just depends a lot as well on things like that or sometimes they don't add ads to all of your videos and that kind of will change things as well. So you can see here, this is my revenue per thousand views. So this is what I actually make for a thousand views compared to like what I should make essentially for a thousand views. It goes between three euro, four euro. So that's what I'm actually earning per thousand views. So this you can see is like the lowest day. So I actually earned like 275 on the day where I should be earning like seven euro. So that's sort of how it works. You can see here I have my top earning videos. So this is because this is one of my most popular videos. This is one of my longest videos that I would have ads in. So this one earns quite a bit as well because there's more ads. And then here we have my planning videos all tend to be like viewed a lot. So those ones seem to earn quite a bit what else do we have mostly I have skippable ads and then the rest of them don't really come up as much yeah so that's how much I'm earning it's not a ton in terms of getting paid there's a few things that I still need to do so I need to actually get my address verified so Google AdSense need to send me a code to my house that I have to fill in on the AdSense platform and then they also need to verify my bank details so essentially they're going to put in a small amount of money into my bank then then I will enter that amount, it's probably like 10 cents, enter that amount into the platform. Again, that's just gonna confirm it and then they're gonna take it away from me. But when I'm gonna be getting paid, so I think it's you get paid on like the 20th of each month for the previous month, like for the whole of July, you'll get paid on like August 20th. And for me being in euros, you need to earn 70 euros to get a payment. So I don't know if I'll actually reach that. The 11th of July now, well, based on this, and I've earned 24 euros. 46 euro for the 20 days following essentially 19 days which is possible if I make a little bit over two euro a day but it kind of fluctuates a bit so we'll see but I will let you guys know if I do if not sadly that video will have to wait another month but you can see I think this kind of hopefully will show you that in the beginning you're not going to make a ton of money and you can't really have it be all about that but if I compare this to someone like Catherine Manning who she got monetized the year before me exactly I think to the date they think she was monetized on the 29th of June 2019. She is now earning like six or seven thousand dollars a month on AdSense and her channel grew from I think she was around 2,000 subscribers. I'm nearing 3,000 subscribers now and she's now up close to 200,000 subscribers a year later. I don't think that's necessarily going to happen for me because my channel is educating about PhD lifestyle and things like that and I don't think there's going to be as many people interested in that in terms of her channel is all about YouTube tips and things and I think there's going to be more people interested in watching things like that or like more likely to subscribe so I'm not saying that my channel is going to go there but I'm just interesting to see how you can be somewhere like I'm in her shoes a year later essentially and it'll be interesting to see a year from now to see how close I am to there or what kind of changes there are so hopefully that was interesting for you guys let me know if you want to see future videos about my AdSense like the ads revenue and things like that because I'd love to do those I think they're really interesting and if people are interested in like side hustles and things like that I love talking about things like that. So let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see things like that. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.